Hey everybody, welcome to Bill Sky, the Assembly Guy, and we're going to continue our discussion about command line arguments today, but this time we're going to do it in ARM, ARM, specifically AA Arch, or I should say A Arch 64 uh, ARM assembler language. So I did this in Linux and I did this in Windows, and this is very, very similar to Linux, x86-64. And we're going to do it in Mint Linux using the A arch 64 cross compiler which should be exactly the same as like on a raspberry pi or just about any arm system 64 bit now if you want to do this in 32 bit uh we I, I might try it out in this video but really all you have to do is just replace all of the x registers with r registers and change it from a from an 8 byte to a 4 byte uh, maximum word size so i think we should just get going all right, so as I mentioned earlier, you might want to take a look at the Linux x86-64 version of this video because I go into much more detail. Uh, but what we're going to do in this video is a lot of debugging. And I'm going to go ahead and empty my trash first. And so just as a quick review, what is a command line argument? Again, I'm going to go, I go into this longer in the Linux x86-64. X86 but a command line argument, if I go in, let's let's copy this fp.dir file that you see here. And I'm just going to say cpfp.dir. Now, if you're on an ARM system, if you're on a Raspberry Pi, the command is exactly the same. If you're on Windows, you would type copy. But not a lot of people are using Windows on ARM processors because Microsoft doesn't officially support it. So a command line argument is the name. First of all, you have the name of the program. You have the first command line argument, which is the source file, and you might want to put a dot slash there to say in the current directory. And then you specify the second to command line argument, fp.dir.back. And the cp command uses those two command line arguments to decide what is, to, to figure out what it is that you're wanting to do. I'm wanting to copy the fp.dir file to a new file, fp.dir.back. Now, how does the cp program know that? The C program knows that because we tell it with these command line arguments. So, and it works exactly the same on ARM as it does on Linux. Quite a bit different than on Windows. And if you want, if you're interested in that, take a look at my Windows demonstration of that. And the result of that copy is a fp.dir.back file. And they they should both be pretty much. Um, oh my goodness! So they they should both both be pretty much exactly the same. Uh, you can see they're both 35 bytes long. Uh, they have the same attributes, file attributes, obviously different times and dates because, you know, today's today and that, that file was created a while ago. Same with the RM. RM, that takes one argument, but notice that, well, it looks like the, the, the RM would let me do multiple directories or files. Uh, it doesn't require just one or two. If I type cpfp.dir, it says, I didn't type in the name right because I don't have enough ar arguments. I don't have enough command line arguments. So depending upon the command will depend upon what the minimum or maximum command line arguments are and also what our order they should be in, if any. So let's get down to the code. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go into my assembler projects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 64-bit template. Now I'm going to put a link to the Komenetsky libraries in there if you haven't downloaded those yet and there it is right here so let's give it a good name i'm going to rename it to linux arm 64-bit command line arguments okay now let's get into this code let's make sure i open it with genie because this is a brand new mint linux And there's some debugging things we're going to do in this. So I want to make sure I've got all those notes up as I do this video. Okay, so a number of things we're going to want to do. Um, I'm probably want, going to want to name, rename this message. And this is from the template. So I'm going to call this uh, hello message. And then I want to give it a valid name. So I'm going to say hello message underscore length. And I'm just, I'm just renaming my, my my variables in the program to make it more understandable and, and you'll see what I mean by that. So I'm going to go ahead and also say a goodbye message. Um, 
let, yeah, let's call it by message. And the reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make absolutely sure that you know that the program has ended correctly and you don't get, you know, you don't look over or overlook a bad return code. Uh, one other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a thing called new line. And I think everybody should have this. And the reason is, is because when you print something, it doesn't automatically print a new line and you have to do all kinds of additional coding to do that. But I'm going to create a little function. That's why this is going to be kind of a neat little video. I'm going to do a bunch of, of kind of new stuff here. And I'm going to go to the bottom of my code here. And I'm just going to paste a function that I wrote when I was writing this code for this video where I print a new line. And the, the, the name of the variables are a little bit different. So let me go ahead and copy those variable names to make sure that we have valid variable names. And all this is going to do is print a bunch of new lines, and we can we can test those. Now, one of the thing I wanted to mention to you also is notice how I've made everything very consistent. I've got my hello message, then hello message underscore len, by message, by message underscore len. Also, notice that message is lowercase in every one of these, so that's going to make it really useful to remember what those variables are. Okay, so let's go ahead and call that function. So I'm going to branch with a link to print new line. Uh, let's do that a couple of times. And what the B does is that it branches to print new line, but the L means I'm going to be returning. So let's go ahead and, and make that. And, oh, what did we do? Oh, it said compiler failed. Let's see, what did we do wrong here? It says assembler message invalid operands or dash when setting new line length. Okay, what did I do here wrong? Oh, I put a capital letter here. Instead of capital L or uppercase L, it should be lowercase L. It doesn't really tell you. <laughs> it's not very good. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that. Okay, and what happened here? It says print new line. Oh, it's looking for MSG. Oh, that's up here. Isn't this weird? It says something about print new line, but MSG is not no is not anywhere in here. That's weird. So I it's because I put in the wrong message here. It should have been hello message. So I made changes, but I didn't I didn't fix all of them. Yeah, I'm not too happy with that with that assembler's messages. So let's go ahead and see if I fixed everything. Now everything is fixed. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and run this program just to show you how the print new line works. And you can see all those blank lines there. Now, if you're if you're saying, well, those blank lines wouldn't necessarily be there, I'm going to go ahead and just delete them, rebuild this. And then rerun it, and you can see the, the new lines are, are, are gone. So print new line, very, very useful. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how do we figure out where the command line arguments are when the program runs. Now, if I go ahead and just run this program the way it is and put in those three command line arguments, it just ignores them because I'm not doing anything with them. But we want to actually see where they are. And this is the exa this is exactly what I did uh, the night before I actually did this video so I could present to you what the best way is to figure out how things are working. Because I'm going to be really honest with you. I've never done command line arguments in ARM programming before. I've done it a ton of times in, in Linux and a few times in Windows, but I've never done it in ARM. But I was very, very pleased to see how much alike it was. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in make debug one. 
and that gets the debugger ready. Then I'm going to say file, open tab, and I'm going to say make debug2. And now we're in the debugger, and I'm just going to say step. So up here in the top, you can see all the, you can see all of the registers, and x0 has a value of one in it, not because that's where the, you know, the program was given that, but because we actually stepped over this first line of code and we put a number one in x0. So that's why that's there. So I'm just going to press my key, my arrow down key here, until I find the stack pointer. And there's the stack pointer right there. Now. The stack pointer is the top of the stack that your program is allowed to use, and anything below that stack pointer is not something that you're allowed to modify. I mean, you really shouldn't modify it, but you can access it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to display in the GDB debugger, I'm going to display what the stack looks like using that, using that address. And the way that you do that is you say x slash, and I'm going to say I want to look at 10 in hexadecimal giant words. That's what that means. And then I'm going to put in the address. And there are our, there's our stack. You can see the first item in the stack has the value of 1 in it. The second item, item has 5500800034F. The third has all zeros. The fourth has so forth. So you can see the actual values in the stack. So this one means that one argument was sent to the program. Now, to make absolutely sure, I'm going to press continue and then quit. To make absolutely sure, I'm going to go in and I'm going to open my make file. There's my make file for my program. And down here in debug two, or debug one, I'm going to put one, two, three. Because in the debug one QEMUA RCH64 statement, one of the arguments that goes to that program is the program name, and that program name is going to have three arguments that I'm going to send to it. So let's see now. Let's let let's rerun our debug here. So I'm going to run debug one. You can see that the program that's going to be run is main with one, two, and three as the arguments. And then I'm going to go back to my other pane. I'm going to step. And then I'm going to go down and look for the stack pointer. Now, the stack pointer is probably exactly the same way it was. So I'm going to say x10xg0x5500. Now it is a little bit different here, so I think that's six zeros. Yes. Oh, nope, it's not. So I'm going to press Control P, and there's our stack again. Now notice that the stack now shows four as the first argument. That's because I, remember before it only showed one, right? That's because when we ran the program, we sent it three additional arguments. Well, why did the one when we sent it no arguments, why did it show one? Because the program name itself is an argument that the operating system uses to execute the program. And it makes available to your program. You may or may not ever use that, but it's there. So it's always going to be one. Whenever you run a program, the, it's always going to have one argument, and that's the program name. And then all of these others are additional to that. Okay? So okay, so we now see that we've got four. So in our program, we're going to want to move. We're going to want to move that somewhere. Uh, you can always access it, but we're going to we're going to move it into a register. But now let's take a look at this next argument. This five five zero zero eight zero 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 three four one. What is that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do another display. I'm going to say I want to I want to do one. I want to display one string in byte format. Now I will put these. I will put these GDB commands into the description of this video. I'm also going to show you how to reissue that command. So, okay, so I want to display one string that's null terminated in byte format. And so I'm going to give it that address. Now, I'm not going to put all the zeros in front of the 55. I'm just going to say 55008000341. Oh, lo, lo and behold, look what we've got. We actually have the first argument, which is the actual program name. All right, so let's try the next one. Let's try this 348. Now, the way I'm now, so I don't have to type in this whole thing again. I'm going to contra press Control P, and that means previous. Show me the previous command, and I'm going to make it 348. 
Notice 341 and 348 are eight bytes different because every value in the stack is eight bytes in size. One, oh my goodness, isn't that what we put? Isn't that what we put in this argument one? Awesome, it's there. Let's do it again. And let's click down here. Oh, sorry, pressing the wrong keys on my keyboard. All right, so now we're gonna look at 3, 4C and I'm getting that from up here. So let's put 3, 4C. And there's two, let's put 3, 5, 0, which is this one. And we get three. So our arguments are actually pointers in the stack right after the count in the stack that is going to keep track or is going to have a pointer to an actual zero null terminated string somewhere out in memory. In this case, 5500800348. Okay, so pretty neat. So we now we know where everything is. So I'm going to just press continue and say quit here. And now let's do something with our code. And let's just leave this one, two, three there because we're gonna to wanna to debug that later on. Okay, so now we have, we actually have, we wanna print a whole bunch of these arguments. But before we print them all, let's just print one. Let's just get that done. And this is exactly how I coded it yesterday. So what I'm gonna do is in my code, I'm going to save all right, now I guess I could save the number of arguments, uh, but I'm gonna ignore that for right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I wanna print that in the first argument, the null terminated string. So I'm gonna move into x0, uh, hashtag one, and that's because whenever you print, you always have to move zero into hashtag one. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm going to move into x2 the stack pointer. Now the stack pointer is pointing to the number of arguments that you sent the, the your, your program, right? But I'm gonna put that in there because I can't really do math on the stack pointer. So I'm just gonna copy that address of, this, of what the stack pointer is pointing to into x2. And then I'm gonna add to x2 and put in x2 eight bytes. That's gonna point to our first null terminated string address. So let's go ahead and put some comments in here, right? The address of the stack, um, of the top of the stack. Go to the first argument address in the stack. So that's in X2. Okay, so what do I wanna do next? Well. The print requires the address in x1, and it requires in x2 the length of the address. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move into x1, x2, because that has the address. Now we could have done this in x1, but I decided for some reason to do it in x2. And then we wanna uh, move into x2 the length of the argument. Now, if you remember, it was dot slash main, so that's six bytes, so I'm gonna say six, because all we're doing is we're just testing. We're just testing to see if we can make this work. Okay, then I'm gonna move into W8, 64, mean, which means write to standard out, and I'm gonna say SVC pound zero, which means turk tickle the kernel. Okay, so put the address into X1, size of the string. Now we're just assuming that we know the size of the string. We don't know the size of the string. So what we're gonna do right after this, we're gonna write a little function that's gonna figure out what the size of the string is. And we're gonna say write to SQL out. I believe that it's what that's what that is. And tickle the kernel. Now, the 64 and the W8 might mean write, and the 1 to X0 might be write to standard out. I don't remember that off the top of my head. Okay, so now we've got that. So let's go ahead and build that. Okay, it built. And let's just run it. Well, it didn't, qu it didn't quite work. We got a little problem there. I'm not really sure what. I've not seen that before. So let's go ahead and look at our code. Yeah, we got some strange data in there. So we put the stack pointer into x2, we added eight to x2, we moved x2 into x1, 
we moved 6, which was the length, into x2. And let's make sure we've got that. And then we moved 64 into w8. Oh, look it. We overrode. No, we didn't. Yeah, 1 going into x0. Hmm. That's interesting. That's an interesting problem. Hmm. Uh, let's fix one thing before. Notice that it, it actually... The, the prompt actually went right after the output. Let, let, let's go ahead and call the print new line. And let's build it. And now let's run it. Okay, good. So now the, the, the prompt went to the next line. But we've got a problem here. And this actually looks correct. Let's double check. I, I'm sure I've got something wrong here. So we moved into x1, the address that we calculated here in x2. We moved 6 into x2 because it's 6 bytes long. Well, I think we need to debug this, don't we? All right, so let's go ahead and debug it. Okay, we can see all of our hello arm 64, that's cool. So now we're gonna move the stack pointer into X2. Now let's make sure that this is done correctly. So I'm gonna scroll down, and this is 55008. So let's step, and it's gonna go into X2. Okay, 55008, okay, that looks good. So we're gonna add eight to X2. Now before we do anything, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to display, are we actually looking at a string to see if we're, if I did anything wrong. And I believe it was 55008. Okay, that's the problem, is that for some reason that address isn't right. Okay, so what's happening here is that we did not dereference so we're, we're, we're looking at the stack, but we didn't dereference it. We didn't actually go to that location in memory. So let's go ahead and continue and then quit. And let's go over here. So I believe what we need to do is that we need to dereference this. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and put square brackets around this. So when we move the address into X1, we're dereferencing it to actually go to the data. Let's build it. And I believe this is LDR. We have to say LDR here instead of MOV. And now let's run it. Whoa, worked. So that was a pretty simple little problem, is that what we were doing was we were putting the address of the stack at you know eight bytes from the beginning into x1 but we hadn't dereferenced that address we were just putting the address in there but we hadn't dereferenced it so that's why we have to put that that in there and i'm going to say put the that dereference address into x1 okay all right cool now what we could do is i could just do this and say, okay, instead of eight, let's put in 16. So I'm gonna to go to the second argument. Now you have to know the length of the string, so O-N-E is three, so I'm gonna go ahead and put three in X2. Yes, and then let's go ahead and build this, and let's run it. And oops, got a problem. It printed a space or printed a blank line, but I didn't actually print. So let's see. So we want to write, we put the address into x2, we add 16, we dereference x2, put that into 1. We then move 3. Now it is, is it 16? Yeah, it should be 16. We then move 3, the size of the string, into x2. So we call this. Oh, I know why, because I didn't put an argument and there it is now if I put another argument nothing prints again because we haven't 
done that here. We haven't actually done a third one. We only did the first and the second. Now there's a huge problem with this program. And the huge problem is, is that the arguments always must be the length that we're expecting. Yuck. What if the first argument is three and not one? Now it's, in fact, I can show you that demonstration. So I'm gonna say three. Well, notice it only printed THR because we're only looking for three bytes on the second one. We need to find out where the end of that string is. Now, if you remember, I said every one of these arguments is null terminated. Oh, so that's the stop sign. That means that the string is done there. So we can actually calculate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little function here called x3 length. Now, the reason why I called it x3 length is because it means that whatever x3 is pointing to, I'm going to find the length of that. So I'm going to move into x2, 0. So I want to zero out our counter. So x2 is going to be used as our counter as we go every character until we get to 0, 0, 0. We're going to keep adding 1 to x2. So I'm going to put in here, zero out our counter. Now what I want to do is I'm going to create a another label here called XL start. Now why called it XL start? Because I always use the first letter of every word in a function within that function for labels. That helps me to not repeat that label in another inline function later on. And then I'm going to put a branch XL start. Now, what, what am I doing here? Why do I need a, a, a loop inside of my function? Is because I'm going to go one character at a time. So for instance, if I put the, the if I put the argument T-H-R-E-E, -E, that's going to end with a backslash zero. That's going to end with zero, zero, basically, just a null terminated string. So what I want to do is I want to check to see where that zero is. The, and the only thing I have is the beginning of that argument. So I'm going to have an address to t. Is t equal to 0? Nope. So I'm going to continue. Is h equal to 0? Nope. Is r? Nope. e? Nope. e? Nope. Is 0 equal to 0? Yes. So that I'm at the end. Now using x2, I'm going to be counting up on that. And x2 is going to contain the value of the of the uh, the length of that string. I, it might be x3, but le le let's take a look. Okay, I'm not super sure how I did this, but let's take a look. So that's why we have a loop in there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to load a byte into a register so I can check to see if it's equal to zero. So I'm going to load a register, a single byte. I'm going to put that into x0. Must be a 32-bit register when you do a load RSB dereference x3. Now why am I dereferencing x3? Well, I didn't put a comment in here. x3 will contain the address of the string. Output, I believe it'll be x2 will contain the length of the string. So input and output is very, very useful for a function. Okay, so let's put a character, put a single byte into w0, and what will happen is the rest of that register will be zeroed out because w0 is a 32-bit register, the rest of it will be zero out. Okay, so now let's compare w0 with 00. zero. Are we at the end? Are we at the end of the null terminated string? Okay, I'm going to branch if equal. Now, where am I going to branch to? Well, I don't want to branch back up to the top of the function. I want to leave the function. So really, what do I want to branch if it's equal to? Well, let's let's get out of the loop. So I'm going to say XL ex and end it. I'm going to branch if equal to XL end it. So if it is equal to zero, we're going to branch out. If we're not, we're going to add to x3, because remember, x3 contains the address of the string we're looking at. I'm going to add to x3, 
one, no, so go to the next byte. And then I want to add one to x2 because x2 is our counter. Now we're adding one to x3, so why can't we just use x3? Because x3 contains an address. x2 contains the number zero, okay? So we're gonna add to x2, one. Increment our character counter. And I believe that's it. So that's our little x3 or, or yeah x3 length function where it's going to go and calculate the length of the string. Now there might be a faster way to do this. There might be I don't think there is a single line of code that you can do this with. Uh, you can do that in Windows because Windows and Linux are CISC x86 64. Uh, but this is a risk system, an ARM system. So you you kind of have to go through something. I might be wrong, but it's kind of fun to do these little programming exercises to build your skills. Okay, so we haven't we have a function now. So what I'm going to do instead of putting the length of the string in there in x2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move or load register x3 the address of the string and then I'm going to call the function. So I'm going to say branch link to x3 length. And now x2 will contain the length of the string. So again, why am I doing this? Is because I need the address in x3 because that's an input into that function. Now that's not really the right way you should do it, but that's the way you can do it on your little internal. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that comment. And let's say what we're doing there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. Okay, that I can't believe it that that built. And let's run it. Wow, it worked. Well, did it really? Let's try it one more time. This time we're going to do it on the second argument. If this works, you no longer need to know the length of each argument. Wow, this is working. This is pretty cool. I'm sorry, I really don't enjoy doing this. So 8, 16, 24. So let's put 24 in there. Let's build it. Okay, let's put 4. Wow, uh, let's see how this works. Let's put it in double quotes. Ah, that's really interesting. So. We have no idea how long this argument was going to be, but because of our little function that we put together, it's going to calculate it. And also notice that an argument, even if it has spaces in it, um, I misspelled hello, but even if it has spaces in it, if it's enclosed in double quotes, it's considered by the operating system as a single argument. Let's see what happens if we put that in single quotes. Uh, well, yeah, we have an issue here because single quotes have a different meaning. All right. All right, this is great. So, but we still have one big problem with this code. And the big problem is, is that we don't have a, we don't have a loop. We have to hard code every single argument. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all these duplicated blocks of code here. And I'm going to put together a loop. So let's call this, um, I'm just going to call it main loop. And I'm going to indent everything. I'm going to say branch to main loop. So there's our loop. Now this is a, this is a, an infinite loop. It just it isn't, it's just going to go forever. So this isn't what we want, but we just put the, everything in a loop. Now what do we need for a loop? We need some kind of a counter. So we have to look at this and say, okay, where are we going to put the number of items? What, what register are we going to use? Well, I'm going to use X4. So I'm going to load in X4 the dereference SP. Now, if you remember at the beginning of our discussion, that contains the dereference XP, copy the number of arguments, 
into x4. So now we have a register that contains the number of arguments. So, but we're also going to have to somehow put, we're going to have to also somehow go to each different position in the stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into x5 the number of bytes that I want to move each time. So the so I so when I get the first string, I don't want to go to the dereference stack pointer. I want to go to the dereference stack pointer plus eight because that's our first argument. So where is our first argument? Or maybe I should say this. Uh, this should be a address offset from the stack pointer, and you might want to say to start. Because remember the, the the stack pointer is pointing to four in the case of you know three arguments, and we want to go to the next line. We want to go to the next uh, eight byte address to get that. Okay, so let's say we've got so uh, we don't want to do this plus eight. What we want to do is we want to say x five, because remember x five now contains the displacement. The hard-coded 8 meant the displacement. Remember, we went 8, 16, 24. Well, now we don't have to do that. Okay, so before we before we leave this, so we're going to print the first one. We know we have a first one. So let's go ahead, and now we have to see if we're at the next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then say add to x5 another 8. So now I want to go to the next. Go to next argument. So that's going to take us, x5 is going to contain the displacement in the stack pointer. Okay? So we say uh, plus 8. Um, what do we want to do? I'm looking at my code here. Oh! Now we have to process our counter. So I'm going to subtract. Now our counter, oh, we don't have a counter, do we? Yep, I moved it into x4. Yep, so we're going to subtract from x4, number 1. Subtract from our argument count. Now we have to tell whether or not that's equal to 0 because we have to know if we need to get out of our loop. So we're going to compare x4 with 0. Are we at the end? And branch of equal, um, end all. I didn't create that yet, but let's go ahead and do that. All right, cool. Let's see how this is going to work. Wow, it worked. It worked the first time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, let's try this. Wow, look at that. It worked perfectly. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that that worked perfectly. In fact, the version that we wrote here is actually smaller than the version I'm looking at over here. There's a few lines less than what I'm looking at over here. That's awesome. Now, there's, all, there's more that you have to worry about here when you get command line arguments, whether it be from Windows, Linux, or Linux ARM, and that's these numbers right here. These are strings. These are not actual numeric values. So, you're going to, so any kind of a, of a number that you send to your function, you're going to have to somehow convert that. And I don't remember if I did that in ARM. I don't think I did. I think I did it in in x86-64, but the process will be quite a bit the same. So you're going to have to convert these into actual numeric values if you want to use them for mathematical purposes. Wow, totally cool. In ARM, we went ahead and we got command line arguments. I'm still smiling because I didn't have any bugs in that, or I did that compiled and it ran perfectly. I can't believe it. 
But one reason I like to code with you like this is so you can see the development progress or the progression of the development. The way that I'm thinking, the way that I'm developing, I'm doing little things at a time. I'm not trying to bite, you know, take a whole a single bite of the entire problem. I'm breaking it down into smaller problems. And I'm also doing a lot of comments. I'm putting a lot of comments in there to make sure, especially in assembly language, to make sure I know what I'm doing. Awesome. I had a lot of fun doing this video, especially when the program ran the first time. And I hope to see it in our next video.